what's up youtube so i got a good video for you today something i couldn't find online anywhere there's a issue with swapping to a holly system so putting a holly system in my car i lost my power steering and that is because our 2013 i think 2013 or 2014 they changed it from a hydraulic pulley style type of rack and pinion to a electronic only rack and pinion so the electric rack and pinion gets a signal through a CAN bus signal and that tells it how much force it needs to give versus how much speed you have and too complicated at one of these events at Beach Bend I think it was LS Fest I talked to Holly some of their techs and they at this time had no information on how to get a signal like that sent to the rack and pinion so during Camaro Fest I had to fight my steering wheel with no power steering right no uh no power steering so this winter I have a goal to fix that I want to give a shout out to these guys right here. They actually gave me the idea and helped me with that the situation. Their idea was to swap it with a hydraulic style rack and pinion, which I did not know that earlier fifth gens had hydraulic rack and pinions. So going from that style, I can put on a electric power steering pump from, I believe, a Volvo. From there I can wire it to the switch and that will power the power steering pump. So when I want power steering, I flip that switch. Since I could not find anything on this and it's only these guys that were able to help me, I like to share share this knowledge. So I hope this information actually helped you guys out and I will show you my process of swapping this from a electric rack and pinion to a hydraulic crack opinion. So. so the first thing you want to do is you want to unloosen this 11 millimeter bolt, which is located right here. If you can kind of see compared to the old pan, um, there's 11 millimeter bolt. You want to take that out and then you want to pry that boot up off of the uh, steering rack. bolt so it slides in fairly easily tie rod ends we just want to loosen up these bolts and unscrew the tie rod out it will change the alignment of your wheels so you'll definitely have to get a alignment done when you get this done just try your best to get it back to where it was though as for marking it i'm not really sure how to mark it when this is the piece that you're adjusting and we're removing this so like I said just kind of do your best to realign it there's a flat surface here you can get it wrench around and start unscrewing it once you listen out of the way you can just push the wheel over and it'll fall out of there and in the case you don't have a adjustable wrench I don't know what size that is I don't have one big enough but the tie rod in itself is 15 millimeters next right over here you'll look and there are two there's one here and one on the far side next to it there should be two bolts here it will be using an 18 millimeter wrench and we'll get this one and the one over here loose. Should release your wreck and pinion from the car completely. So what I'm having to do, I don't know if you can see, I got my wrenches leveraged. I'm giving it all I got and this bolt is tight. <laughs> what I'm having to do, I got a big socket on a jack handle. I 
We're gonna reach it back there. This right here is giving me enough leverage to finally break it loose without busting my knuckles again. Getting over here on the driver's side, there's one more bolt in my opinion right there. So we'll probably do the same process. Apparently there's another bolt up here at the top. Right there. So it's directly where this is, it's like directly up above. So I'm going about it completely weird. But I've got an extension going all the way from the top. The engine bay down there. And I've managed to break it loose just like this. So I could not get a could not get a good bite down underneath. Now that we have all the bolts out, as you can tell that was a longer one. The other three are the same. Then you have your steering rod bolt. Now, as you can tell, it's completely free now. So we just have to maneuver it out of here. So after trying for a few minutes now, I think, what we're gonna have to do is take this sway bar out and that should give us some room to move forward and maybe enough room to slide out the side there the bolt will swivel with the nut so i just clamp down to it and using an 18 millimeter wrench just loosen it up so we're using a 15 millimeter wrench to take off the bolts of both sides of both of them and we'll temporarily remove the sway bar so now with the sway bar pushed up out of the way i'm able to shift the rack and pinion forward um, the steering rod here is hitting the frame so we're trying to just pry it down roll it forward and try to just slowly make our way out the side here. It may it would be easier if I took the wheel off, but I'm trying to do this with as little unnecessary work as possible. All right, so I've ran into some trouble getting the electric part of the power steering to fit past. That welded stud right there and the nut and bolt for the lower control arm. What we managed to do now, <coughs> we removed bolt here, bolt up there, and one more bolt up top of the power steering rack. Um, there's one more bolt right here. Um, you can't get it out until you go ahead and pull this out. There's there's no fluid in it. It's a spline. What you can do is just set that aside. Now that should open up a lot of clearance to get this rack and pinion out. And what we're actually going to do now, now that we looked at it a little bit, a little bit more, uh, we're going to take out this bolt, which is just, this one's an M8. These out here were M10. And one right there and one right here. And we should be able to separate the rack and pinion in half, which would make it a lot, a lot easier to get out of here. So we wiggled it some and got this between here. Now we can separate it open. See there's the gears in there. But again, thankfully no oil, so we're not getting drenched here. And there's a belt that runs between the spline and the this gear. So let's see if we can get this part. So we didn't take it off, but it's allowed us to twist it as needed. And the last thing that's holding us back is where the steering rod is hitting some of the supports. So what we're gonna do is take off this long rod right here. Use an M18 wrench, we're just gonna take this off. 
starting to slip on us, so I'm gonna put a locking wrench there to hold the bolt tight while we get the nut loose. Fast forward a bit. I've had to take a lot more out. I had to undo the alternator, take out the lower control arm. Um, the stud sticking out there was too much. Um, once I finally got it out, the hydraulic one just slides right in, no problem at all. So now I'm just gonna tighten everything back up that I had to take loose and then I'll start tightening the rack and pinion in. But in the end, to get this out, I had to flip it upside down, which was almost impossible. Then I had to angle it up into my engine bay just a little bit and then forcibly get it out. Uh, hopefully I didn't damage anything. I'll know when I start it up. I start seeing fluid leak everywhere. I hope not. But yeah, this was a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> the hydraulic version actually went in really easy. And I would imagine it'd be easy to get out too. So if you're just doing the hydraulic version, you shouldn't have any of these issues I just had. So I'm going to show you now the power steering pump. It's just a Volvo power steering pump. As far as electrical goes, the main power there, which I spliced into where the electric power steering went, then all it needs is a ignition source going to that wire right there, which I'll I'll put in. I'll put the uh, wiring diagram up on the video too. Sorry, my phone's not focusing here. As far as lines go, it's just a ordinary return line, and this is a high pressure um, pressure line. Um, I went 45 off of here, going down in there. So back in here, the the line that's coming out of the front, I guess of the bracket pinion, that front one is the high pressure line. So please make sure you get a high pressure line there. I'm ready for just typical power steering. And this side line right here is just a return line, so it's low pressure. You just get a normal kind of line, like I just got a barb fitting on for that one. As for the fluid that goes in there, it is this brand right here. It's a CHF 11S power steering fluid. Um, that's what they, they required it, I guess, for the Volvo. Well, I'm sure you could use others, but this right here is just a safe route getting the OEM style power steering fluid. So, if I'm not mistaken, it took about one liter, maybe a little less. Oh, I got two just to be safe, so I didn't know how much to say with drink. Uh, I also built a custom bracket that went where the windshield wiper fluid went, so it just bolts in there and there. And then I have rubber bushings here to keep any vibration down. And it's not touching on the bottom, so it's it'll float. It's kind of floating there. Anyways, I hope this video helps you out. Try to make it as informative as possible. Um, I know there's a, probably a lot of stuff I missed that you guys may have questions on. So if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. If you like this video, please 
like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.